you not do it speaks to the issue of passion. When you do something because you love doing that thing, when doing something is its own reward, there are certain levels of competence and performance that nobody else can attain. Let me put it this way. If, for example, you find that you love teaching children, my wife is a teacher, if you find that you love teaching children, you will discover that without training, you, did, you don't have a degree in education or any of those things, or a child psychology or any of those things, you will discover that you seem to have an innate or taught wisdom when it comes to matters that affect children. That even people that took the pains to go to school to study for it do not have. Now the whole point of that statement is this, that passion births wisdom. Passion births excellence. And so if you find that you are in a situation where you are doing something, look, even as students, you will discover that when you read for an exam because you want to read for it, because you enjoy this course, because you like it, you find you read better than when you are reading because somebody is forcing you or because of the threats of exams coming up the next week. I don't know if you discover that. I'm not talking of this psychedelic crabbing that we do. I'm talking of reading and knowing that you are reading this course because you enjoy this course. You perform better than the courses you are doing simply because somebody told you or forced you or whatever. That is how life is. Life is calling on you to act according to passion, not according to pressure. And understand this, passion is about self-motivation. A self-motivated person is always, will always defeat somebody that is doing things because of the money you will get. The best kind of motivation comes from within, internal pressure, to be your best. Not the external pressure that comes from, oh, what will happen if I fail the exam? What will happen if I don't get this job? And I'll give you an example. Nigeria has one of the most gifted sets or the most talented set of footballers anywhere in Africa. But if you put the Nigerian national team on the field with Togo or Swaziland or Mozambique or God, Somaliland or Madagascar or God knows where, there is no guarantee that the Super Eagles will beat them. As a matter of fact, many times they will get trashed by those countries. You know why? You offer 11 Nigerian footballers $5,000 as match bonus. If you are not coming with that $5,000, even if the World Cup was taking place on the moon, they will not show up for that match. For them, it is about $5,000 for most of them. For players like my, people from Madagascar, Mozambique, Angola, and all that, it is about representing their country. Because those countries cannot afford to pay their players $500. Do you understand this? What I'm trying to say to you is that you need to look for motivation within, not without. You do not need the fear of failure to make you a better person. You need only to look within yourself and find the drive to be the best that you can possibly be. Okay? The last of these questions is this. It's a practical one. Everybody has skills, talents, things that they are uniquely good at. The question is, how can you take your skills and your talents and turn them into marketable commodities? You might be good at painting or singing, or drawing, or whatever it is that you do. Your challenge is to move from the place where that thing is just a hobby, and take it and transform it into something that people will be willing to pay for. Everybody that you look at, P-Square, for example, very successful, you know, two of Nigerian musicians. We went to the same university. I remember when they were doing gigs for free, in fact, I remember on one occasion when this square came out to say that they stole them with pure water. I remember. Okay? They stole them with pure water in the university. Now you can't even get, I mean, I'm not sure they even remember where to be saying it. And I went somewhere and I told somebody and there was a sudden newfound respect for me because I said I went to the same university with this square. That's how life is. Do you understand? My point is that from being stoned with pure water for saving rubbish, they have called their talents into a marketable commodity. Now your own challenge is the same. You might be good at sewing, singing, whatever it is, paint, graphic art, graphic design, whatever it is. Ask yourself, how can I take this and turn it into 
a marketable commodity, something that people will be willing to pay for. I mentioned that because the next thing that we should take note of on our list of resolutions is that we are in the age of multiple streams of income. Okay? Multiple streams of income. In this current era, it is very doubtful that you can afford to sit down and decide that, you know, just this one, whatever it is, whatever line of work it is, will support you and sustain your family. I'm not sure that that is possible. We're in an era where you should learn anything that you are good at. Now, I mentioned earlier that my wife is a teacher, so she has a day job as a school teacher. My wife likes baking. She has turned that into a business as well. Do you understand this? Now, every skill that you have, every talent that you have, they are not, these things are not recreational distractions. These things are areas and skills of competitive advantage that God has given you. That is the way to think of your talents so that you do not waste them. Take every conceivable advantage that you have and turn them into, an, into a stream of income. Because that is the era in which you are entered. You cannot afford to let anything you have by way of opportunity or resource or advantage go to waste. Okay? Next. Now these are just a list of resolutions. We've discussed the reality of ground, and now we're discussing how to engage with those realities. You have to develop a culture of learning, a personal culture of learning. You need to develop a personal culture of learning. This is very relevant to us because we do not have this culture. Too many people at university cramming you are not actually achieving mastery of your courses of study. You are cramming. So you come out of university with a degree that no substance. And that is the credibility crisis that faces Nigerian employment or Nigerian students and Nigerian education. Now, when I mean achieving mastery, it is not enough to pass exams. I don't know, um, is there enough faculty? There is a book called Learning the Law. If there are any law students here, by Glanville, somebody, Glanville Williams or so. The edition I had when I read it, the first statement in the book is this simple statement. It says, passing law exams does not mean that you are a lawyer. And that is something you need to think of. Passing accountancy exams doesn't mean you are an accountant. You are a lawyer where you can exercise mastery over the course of study, over law itself. You are an accountant or whatever it is that you are, when you have mastery, not a university degree. And what anybody will ask you, whether you are looking for a job or whether you are looking for a loan to start your own business, is mastery. When people, when you go and as an entrepreneur, if you ever go somewhere and you ask for a loan, the reason why they ask you for a business plan is not because they like people. It's because the business plan will indicate to them your level of mastery. And if your business plan does not reach a certain standard, it tells them that you do not have mastery. So, to be practical about this, it is not enough to say, come out and say, I have a degree in accounting. That's the relevant. Where you should be aiming, what you should be aiming to have is actual mastery. Go and get certifications in these software applications, Sage, Pitch Tree, and uh, spreadsheet and those things, the things that mean that when a product